Honorable members, this communication relates to the business appearing under order number 10 in today's order paper being Committee of the Whole House on the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill number 30 of 2024. Honorable members, you recall that on Wednesday, 19th June 2024, I guided all members desirous of proposing amendments to the bill to submit the amendments to the Office of the Clerk by 1 p.m. on Thursday, 20th June 2024. At the close of the submission period, 37 members, including the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning on behalf of the committee, had proposed amendments to the bill. Honorable members, Article 114 of the Constitution provides that in any instance where a motion makes provision for a matter listed in the definition of a money bill, the House may proceed only in accordance with the recommendation of the relevant committee after taking into account the views of the Cabinet Secretary responsible for finance. In this regard, and noting the importance of the various amendments received on the bill, I directed the clerk to convey the amendments to the National Treasury for the purpose of obtaining the views of the Cabinet Secretary in line with Article 114 of the Constitution. Honorable Members, pursuant to Standing Order 131, I also referred proposed amendments to the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning to consider harmonizing harmonization of similar or related proposals made with respect to various clauses in the bill and to report the outcome of the exercise. This exercise is referred to as winnowing in parliamentary parlance. Honorable members, I am informed that the committee undertook the winnowing yesterday, Monday, 24th, June 2024. The chairperson of the committee has since briefed me on the harmonization process. I am informed that during the winnowing process, the committee did agree to yield the moving of various amendments to members who had proposed similar amendments to the bill at the appropriate time. Based on the briefing and the recommendations received from the Cabinet Secretary, responsible for finance, members will note that the disclaimer, subject to provisions of Article 114 of the Constitution, appears under specific amendments in the order paper. Pursuant to the provisions of Article 114 of the Constitution, and in keeping with previous guidance on this matter, I therefore direct that the proposed amendments bear in the disclaimer subject to provisions of Article 114 of the Constitution will not be considered in the Committee of the Whole. Additionally, Honourable Members, I wish to convey that I have received notice that the following members have formally withdrawn their amendments to the Bill, notwithstanding my approval or the position of the Committee during the winnowing process. The Honorable Martin Spito Wino, MP, the Honorable Beatrice Elache, MP, the Honorable Dr. Makali Mul, MP, the Honorable Gadoni Wamshomba, HSC, MP, the Honorable Milio Odiambo, MP, the Honorable Anton Oluoch, MP, the Honorable Engineer Paul Nzengu, MP, the Honorable Samuel Atande, MP, the Honorable Caleb Amis, MP, the Honorable Clive Gisairo MP, the Honorable Irene Mayaka MP, and as I was starting the House, I've been brought also the following, the Honorable Robert Ngui Basil MP, and the Honorable Joshua Kivinda Kimilu MP. For the guidance of the House, I note that arising from the winnowing process, a significant number of the proposals in the amendments formally withdrawn by the foregoing members are either carried in the committee's amendments or the amendments proposed by other individual members. The House is accordingly guided, and I thank you. Yes, uh, Honorable Wandai.
Uh, Honorable Speaker, of course, I appreciate your communication, but you must also take cognizance of the huge number of amendments that have been dropped. It is it's good to put this in context for the benefit of the public, Honorable Speaker. As you can, as you can clearly see, those, um, those amendments that have been dropped emanated almost entirely from the members of the Azimio coalition. And this was as a result of extensive deliberations and consultations that we had within ourselves. We came to this very painful decision to have these amendments dropped because prosecuting them was going to be in vain, was going to be a futile exercise, was going to sanitize a process that we have since uh, declared Honorable uh, and I, uh, order. Uh, Float. Order, Honorable, Honorable Wandai. Speaker. Take your seat. Take your seat. Honorable Wandai, that is an ambush. To begin with, the amendments withdrawn are not your amendments. None of them belong to you. Two, I have order Commissioner Macau. Take your seat. Two honorable and I, I have not received any communication from any member withdrawing the amendments that they have asked you to speak on their behalf. Because these are individual amendments. They are not amendments of the minority party, neither are they amendments sponsored by anybody other than the member individually. So I want to encourage you because you are always a very decent minority leader that don't go that route because I will not allow you. Having directed you on the amendments and the withdrawals, out of 37, 13 have been withdrawn. I have been asked by the Honorable Kajuang that he wishes to withdraw his amendment formally so I'll give him um, um, an opportunity to say so. The rest of the members, order, I can read through your minds. You want to make reckless political statements in the, in the, in the guise of amendments. Order, order, any member who wants to, to withdraw your amendments, Write a letter, send to my office, I'll approve immediately. And the clerk at the table will be notified. The only person who has asked me and I've acceded for him, and he was gracious enough to walk to the chair and say he left his letter in the office, but he can put his withdrawal on record, his lawyer, TJ Kajuan. And I give him that opportunity. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to withdraw uh, my amendments, uh, and so I want to express myself to the Hansard that my amendments stand withdrawn. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for giving me this one minute also on record that I had proposed an amendment to clause number 48 of the bill. I wish to withdraw that amendment in line with the feelings of the country. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, in line with your guidance, Mr. Speaker, I also had uh, an amendment, Mr. Speaker, and I thank you for giving me this opportunity to withdraw the amendment, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, for the orderly business of the House, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to bring to your attention that as a minority group, Mr. Speaker, we had a parliamentary group yesterday, even though we have not communicated to you formally. On that one, you are right. I have received no communication. You are right, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we have agreed that all the minority members will withdraw the amendments so I want to give judicial notice to the chair of the committee who is going to run the affairs of the committee of the whole house after you, Mr. Speaker, 
that every member should be accorded an opportunity to withdraw his or her amendment at the rise of, uh, at the, at the, rise of the, the matter, by, by the time the, the, the chair raises the matter on the floor of the House. So, Mr. Speaker, that is the position. That we are withdrawing all our amendments. We want to reject the bill in totality, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Your, your notice is not judicial. It's formal. What you will do, members, is those of you who want to withdraw your amendments, you can even do a handwritten withdrawal, send over, I'm recessing back to the chamber, I will immediately approve and send it to the presiding member of the panel. On the same matter, and those who do not want to write, Remain in the chamber. When your amendment is reached, you simply stand up and say, Honorable Chair, I beg to withdraw my amendment. And the matter ends there. It is as simple as that. We don't need to debate on this. Honorable Senior Counsel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand uh, understanding Order 83. But first is to appreciate your guidance uh, as soon as the uh, commissioner is done with you. So start again. I, I, I appreciate your guidance on that matter. And indeed, uh, it is the right of every member to withdraw any amendment. Mr. Speaker, I do not have any amendment because I took the position that you cannot amend a bad bill. But separately, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to raise to your attention the matter of dress code. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, Two weeks ago, I raised the issue of Honorable Didmat Baraza wearing an unparliamentary hat. And you deferred your ruling on advisement. And since you deferred, now the Honorable Moroto is also going that direction. But Mr. Speaker, you know, it's not just unparliamentary, but I want you to take judicial notice or parliamentary notice that we on this side are dressed in black. And I'm happy you're also dressed in black, Mr. Speaker. I think you are helping us mourn with the rest of Kenyans that we are in a very dark situation. Mr. Speaker, may you, on the matter of parliamentary dress code, address the, the issue of Honorable Baraza and Honorable Moroto and find them grossly out of order and throw them out for the rest of this session. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So that is about the fourth time, Honorable Tiende, you've raised that. Let's go on with the business. I'll give a formal direction maybe tomorrow. Yes. Atandi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I've been, I've been uh, raising my hand to raise a matter which is similar to what Honorable Tienda has raised on dress code. Honorable Speaker, there's a lady nominated MP who is not dressed properly. And Honorable Speaker, to make the matters worse, she's also yellow in color. So she's yellow in color. So most of us are not concentrating because of the way she's dressed. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, I don't know her name, but she's, she's there. She's, she's showing off her... Which member? Every member here has a name. So, which member? Honorable Speaker. When Otienda Molo spoke, he said Didimas and Moroto. So, who are you referring to? Honorable Speaker, her name, I think her name is Teresa. Honorable Teresa, some, some, something like that. She's, Honorable Speaker, she's yellow in color. And Honorable Speaker, we can't concentrate. Which member is that? <laughs> order, order, honorable members. I'm not aware of any member called something like that. <laughs> honorable members, will you be upstanding so that we go to committee of the hall? <laughs> Has the order been called? Okay, hold on. Call the order. Order number 10, committee of the whole house. Order members, will you be upstanding? Honorable member for Kamkunji. Honorable Kwame, will you be upstanding? Or are you standing? <laughs> Sorry, Honorable Kwame, I thought you were sitting. <laughs>